Welcome to the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast with psychologist Dr. Doreen Downing. Listen in as Doreen interviews people who felt they didn't have a voice or who suffered extreme speaking anxiety. You'll hear stories about how they struggled to speak up, what they did to find their authentic voice, and the confidence they now feel to speak up and make an impact. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free seven step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. And now, here is Doreen. Hello, I'm Dr. Doreen Downing, host of the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast. What we do here on this podcast is to invite guests who have some story about their voice, either never having much of one where they felt like they could stand up and speak out in any situation, to those who actually have had no problem and who feel like life circumstances, however, did something that made them feel like they had to hold themselves back. Other kinds of stories we've heard here on the podcast are people who find themselves in corporations and have to speak a certain kind of corporate speak, I guess, and, and really can't be true to themselves. So bottom line here and why I do this podcast is because I love bringing out the authentic voice in people. I love giving a platform where people can tell the truth about their own history, their own story of what it was like either having a voice or not having it and how if they didn't have one, what happened in life that they found it <laughs> and we always welcome people to offer what they do do nowadays because most people that I invite here do have some kind of business or coaching program where they have moved through their own struggles and now offer offer other people some I don't know some some coaching experience. So thank you today. I am happy to introduce you to Leanne, a really wonderful, heartful person that I'm going to oh, have really, a, 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 I welcome to have time with Leanne today. So um, mm -hmm. I'd like to read something about you, Leanne. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Leanne is a trauma counselor clinical supervisor, and proud mama of a 2014 NICU graduate. And NICU, for those who might not know what that means, it's Newborn Intensive Care Unit. She is an author, speaker, and blogger. Leanne loves supporting individuals to move from frustration to freedom. Oh, I like that. I'm going to say that again. From frustration to freedom, oh. mm. which in turn <laughs> grows love. Oh, this is wonderful to read out loud so that people are really getting already so far. If people aren't viewing you, they yeah. will be listening to what I'm viewing right here on screen with you. <laughs> Just a, a love uh, coming from a very deep part of you. But let me say one more thing about what you've uh, given me as your bio. She's an amateur genealogist, loves being creative and spending time with her family. <laughs> Big breath to take all this in and opening up the space to explore you, <laughs> <laughs> you and your life. And I always like to start early on because people don't know that you are not I don't think you were born in this country, right? In the United States? No, uh, I am Canadian through and through um, with a lot of old, old country heritage. Um, and uh, I still am in Canada, but I, when the borders are open, <laughs> I venture down to the States quite often. <laughs> Well, isn't this amazing that we can develop a friendship and a conversation here and it doesn't have to be you're my next door neighbor, but in a way it does <laughs> feel like it because of this opportunity we have with the uh, internet. So yeah. we're here to talk about voice and if we can um, go back to the beginning mm -hmm you way up there in Canada, little baby coming out and hey, hello world. Yes. 
anything you can say about the your early life? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so early in life, I learned that people were watching. And I've always been tall. You know, I'm six one is where I ended up. And being taller throughout my life, I had a different sort of attention. And when I would use my voice along with my height, people would have interesting reactions. And early, early, I remember family events and friend circles, and I'd use my voice and I'd feel like I was being laughed at. And I'd feel um, like I couldn't share my whole self. You know, I had to be a particular way in the world. And my mom was always a support and dad too, you know, when he was around, he was a busy dude, but um, early, early childhood um, was still adventurous. It was still very magical. It was still full of dressing up my little brother in Holly Hobby clothes, you know, that creative sense <laughs> of childhood. So um, yeah a combination of of life beautiful you know I've never had that on the podcast with all the what 85 episodes I've done okay. that kind of connection with physical being a, a certain mm -hmm. height that you say that is um, compared to other kids your age might be a little bit out of the norm so you would stand out and that mm -hmm. would be uh, something I hadn't really thought of, and I bet that relates to a lot of the listeners who, in some ways, had some kind of body shape that <laughs> was, uh, you know, something that maybe they got teased about. Were you teased? All the time. Oh. All the time. Yeah. Um, not only friends or or classmates, but family and, you know, closer individuals. There was always a reason you know, whether I was wearing my glasses or had, you know, braces or I was too tall or, 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 or big feet, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, so always something or too skinny, right? My metabolism's quite fast. And so it's hard for me to gain weight and different things in life. Being a NICU mom, you know, that was a very, um, trying time with my health so I actually lost more weight and I've had criticisms about that whereas I can take down a bag of chips or I can sit with you know all sorts of junk food very easily and it's hard for me to to gain weight which is the other you know mm -hmm. health concern that some people have so it's um there's always a reason for people to poke right that is so I, I always want to say profound <laughs> right really yeah. true yeah and that no matter what or who we are or what we look like there's always somebody who might uh, take I don't know might make something out of it that's negative and then mm -hmm. whether they tell it to us or not face to face um, mm -hmm. it's there yeah. in their attitude or their approach or the way that they treat us so being teased a little bit, that to me feels like you might hold yourself back. Is was that what you did? Or how do you how did you handle being teased? Yeah, most definitely. One of my earliest memories um was there was a big family dinner um at a friend's restaurant family friend's restaurant, and we were all in these tables and someone was making fun or teasing my dad, or what I felt was teasing my dad. So I stood up this I think I was maybe eight and I stood up and I said I'm just like my dad nobody make fun of my dad and everybody just laughed right there was no support there was no it's okay sweetheart you know like there was that I remember in my little brain and so I just sat back down and I slunk and I remember like I'm doing it right now on video but I remember just like oh my lord like am I not everyone's laughing at me I shouldn't I shouldn't voice my thoughts like I can't stand up for people I can't stand up for myself and I just got really quiet and really small I tried to make myself small and that was one of the 
it's a very profound memory for me and I've had to work through that one as kind of like a planted seed that made me hide for 40 years almost so oh well I'm feeling it right now it with mm. a lot of empathy for mm. that that little one who um was had a certain kind of defiance though and the, the bravery and the courage and right. um you know just shooting up like that impulsively to protect yeah so that that feels like you know one of your gifts I think one of your mm -hmm. um, you know from way way back that that shows us that there was something internally that was ready to stand up for yourself and for others or at least for others right mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty much what you do you know that's, <laughs> yeah. that's your work so, my work so I I get it's kind of like we've got incidences that we can point to that were well like you're saying it was pretty profound moment for you but mm -hmm. both are there the mm -hmm. natural inclination the gift as well as the injury at the same time yeah yeah exactly uh, and then going through into my teenage years you know you're always awkward well I was awkward <laughs> I was around a lot of awkward people and um we we were kind of that grunge generation so we hid in big clothes and I still have I can still wear some of my clothes from like grade seven grade eight grade nine because they were so big like we got extra larges and big baggy pants and dad's sweaters and you know pajama pants and stuff so I was really hiding and um, another interesting memory I have is my girlfriend and I were she's five two and I'm up here at six one and we were um, G.I. Joe and Barbie for Halloween and I wore the Barbie costume and she wore the G.I. Joe costume and everyone this may be too much information but everyone thought I'd stuffed my bra because there I was in like a regular t-shirt um being Barbie and like a skirt and tights and stuff and and I, I was like I don't know how to answer this because usually I have big baggy clothes and no one can see my figure and stuff and there I was and uh oh good stuffing Leanne you know all that kind of stuff and I was like well I'm just gonna let them think that because I don't know how else to respond because uh -huh. I was still very much hiding myself uh -huh. yeah so <laughs> Yeah, well, hiding seems to be the major um, component for people who aren't afraid, who are, who hold themselves back. But what were you afraid of, would you say? You, you hid be, because what? I mean, early on, people laughed, but mm -hmm. what do you imagine was the fear? And if you didn't hide, mm -hmm. what would people be saying? Yeah. Um I know what my now brain wants to say, but going back into that part of myself, I, I was afraid of, I was afraid of being seen, but I was also afraid of the negative re reactions and responses that I would get when I would use my voice because like you said there was that strength there's that part of me that naturally knows how to or maybe not gracefully in the beginning but knew that standing up for someone else or standing up for something that was based in love um meant something to me so I did have a voice and I went to leadership conferences and all that kind of stuff but I didn't ever want to be a leader because I was afraid of the repercussions I couldn't handle what could have happened if it wasn't positive I think that's yeah. you know the yeah. the stirrings within me yeah and I think you just laid it out pretty well is that sometimes people um, hold themselves back not just because they're afraid to um, have eyes on them and be, they're afraid they're going to fall apart or be nervous it's the what happens next so that you do speak up 
let's say, and then you're going to get some kind of response. Yes. So it's the anticipated response that feels like uh, down the line after you've spoken, after you've used your voice, what might happen. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that, big. Yeah. And that's a pattern. It feels like that goes along with the story is it happened after you spoke up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So moving along in life yeah. <laughs> and having both going on the hiding as well as the inner strength that that you probably became more and more aware of. Is that how it happened? Tell us a little bit about your journey. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So I I did have a lot of teasing, like up until my 30s, people would still comment on different things. Um I, when, when I was younger, you know, I got reprimanded because someone asked me if I was a basketball player and I asked them if they were a jockey because they were short <laughs> and apparently I wasn't allowed to do that, but it was okay for them to ask me how, like, if I played some sort of sport just because I was tall. So I had those little like pieces within me. And as I grew up and as I became an independent adult, um, I realized that I wasn't very graceful with those moments. And because I was pushing people away, um, people would say that I was intimidating um, or I was too strong or, um, and so after those responses, I would hide more of myself. Well, I can't be like that then, right? And I went to school in the States and then I came back home and I got, I got working in um, the homeless community in Vancouver, uh, lots of um, active addictions. And um, I found that my voice came out a lot more advocating and um, having doctors appointments with some of my people. And then I got a job as a counselor. Um, there because I got my master's degree and um, more and more I was able to learn from the elders um, in the native health uh, medical clinic that I was working in that being able to share your thoughts in a graceful manner went a lot further than standing up and telling everyone this is how I this is how it should be, right? <laughs> Just like any dictator, no one wants to be dictated to, but having ideas come to the table is definitely a more um, approachable way of doing it. And so I saw those bits and pieces come through me and be guided by different people who had experience being a minority and not feeling like they had a voice. And so all of a sudden I was turning into their voice for them. People who are going through transgender um, changes and all sorts of amazingly tingling, like I still get shivers thinking about my people down there. And, um, and I'm away from Vancouver now, which is why I said down there. But um, then I had my son and he came nine weeks early. And so we were in the NICU, the newborn intensive care unit for two months with him and not knowing whether or not we could take him home at the end of it. He was very sick. And that also catapulted me into using my voice because in there, it doesn't feel like it's your baby because there's so many nurses and medical staff and this appointment and that feeding and this monitor and you can't hold them because you stop breathing and all these types of chaotic things and you have to weave yourself into the system it feels like it felt like there's been a lot that's happened over the last eight years in um, special care nurseries and and NICUs um, but because of those of us around the world who are using our voices and saying no mom needs this or dad needs visitation rights or grandma or partner or whomever it might be so that was the sort of novice voice using <laughs> technique kind of that that I was catapulted into and 
then I started going to conferences. So after being a NICU mom and coming out of it, but also having, you know, the psychology training as a profession, that's what I do um, and did. I was like, wow, like with everything that I know and everything that I am and everything that I've done for other people, why having him home, why do I still feel like this? Why do I still feel alone and tormented and traumatized? How can I be my own counselor? Is that even possible? And it's not really, like to a certain extent, as you know. But that really got me thinking, how can I help other people not have to feel like this? So I started going to conferences and seeing those people on stage and hearing stories on stage. And just as you're doing here, sharing other people's stories so that it can spark things in others. And it's that ripple effect. And I, I caught it. I caught the wave <laughs> and I found a coach and he and his program and his team really were our the people I trusted and took a lot of risks for. So having that accountability to something or someone else really catapulted me into growing me. And then my voice came along with it. I love the way you just said that growing me because the voice does come from a me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And which, me, and which me is it? And the more we grow ourselves and the more we know ourselves, it feels like we have different aspects of our voice that can come forth. And I love the the elders who showed you a new way to use your voice. And I feel I feel that. I feel that you're in being with you. And it something I'm learning right now from you is that. The way you use your voice or the way just in general, the way that we use our voices mm -hmm. um, really can impact people. It could help wake them up. It could help mm -hmm. like you're very, you're very gentle and the gentleness makes me relax just listening mm -hmm. to you. Oh, and so yes. that, that um, quality, that tone that way of being strong, I guess, and soft at the same time is mm -hmm. what I'm getting from you today. So thank you for ooh, all the all the depth and the sharing and the details. We're, you. You're welcome. We're coming to the end of our time together. And I want to make sure if there's something that you want to share about um, how people can find you or what you do in the world currently so that mm -hmm. people who have been touched by your voice today will be able to find you. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. Thank you. And thank you for all those kind words. It's, um, yeah, it's powerful hearing that back. Um, so I have two functioning websites, <laughs> leandorishcounseling.ca and nope.com sorry changed that just recently um and and my NICU family com. so i'm on instagram and facebook um you can find leanne dorish lots of different places i think i'm on linkedin and stuff too but um i have i i'm I like doing a lot of different things. So Instagram is usually my NICU family um, is the handle that you can reach me at the easiest or go to my counseling website and email me, message me, you know, um, anytime. So I'm happy to share more with anyone and help in any way that they need or I can or we can work together and <laughs> move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I, I just want to be in your presence more <laughs> oh, <laughs> because uh, it's so people, whoever's listening, you can feel the radiance, can't you? And there's a radiance in the voice as well as on screen in the visual. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for your radiance and for touching us today. And thank you so much, Doreen. It's been an honor.
Thank you for being with us today for this episode of Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Each person during interviews shares what has helped them find their voice. You can learn from these guests and find your voice so you can be confident to speak up and speak out. And remember to download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll return next time. Until then, goodbye for now.